The NBA has changed drastically over the past few weeks with lots of players changing teams through free agency and trades. There are lots of great duos in the NBA now, and lots of teams have at least two stars or superstars on their team. But which team has the best duo in the NBA? Let's rank all the top 30 duos in the NBA from each team. Starting at number 30, we have Terry Rozier and Miles Bridges for the Charlotte Hornets. This is by far the worst duo in the NBA, as Rozier was really bad last season and a small sample size from the 2018 NBA playoffs isn't going to make me think he's going to be an above average starting NBA point guard. He chucks up a lot of shots and is very inefficient as we've seen from a large sample size of his career 272 games and 38% shooting from the field. He may have some bigger numbers with an increase in minutes and usage, but don't expect him and Bridges to spike up this list anytime soon. At number 29, I have Darius Garland and Kevin Love for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Garland is a knockdown shooter who has a very quick release, and I think he has the potential to be one of the top scoring point guards in the NBA. But he's young and it's definitely going to take time for him to develop. Love is still a very good NBA player and can put up 20 and 10 when healthy, but the defense between these two will be bad and that's why they are near the bottom. At number 28, I have RJ Barrett and Mitchell Robinson for the New York Knicks. I really like the potential of these two, as Robinson showed last season that he may become a future defensive player of the year. Not to mention he's also a terrific finisher at the rim, and I actually think he could become a great two-way player in the NBA. Barrett has struggled in the summer league but has the tools to be a good two-way player, and we'll see if he can step it up at the NBA level. At number 27, I have Bradley Beal and Isaiah Thomas for the Washington Wizards. Beal had a great season last year as the main option for the Wizards, but with Wall out, he doesn't have much help. Thomas was horrible for the Nuggets last season and was so bad that he couldn't even break into the regular rotation, but he will get a chance to likely start for the Wizards this season and try to get back to his old form. If he can do that, this duo will spike up the rankings, though defense will cap their ceiling. At number 26, I have Aaron Gordon and Nikola Vucevic for the Orlando Magic. These two are an underrated duo and helped the Magic make it to the playoffs last season, and they should help Orlando be in playoff contention once again next season. Their ceiling is kind of capped with Vucevic already being 28, and I don't think Gordon is going to take another big step next year, but I do like these two, and they do deserve more national attention. At number 25, I have Malcolm Brogdon and Miles Turner for the Indiana Pacers. So I did include Oladipo here because he'll likely be out for most of next season, but the Pacers will still have a nice duo here. Brogdon is a steady and great overall player, and Turner is an elite rim protector. These two should lead the Pacers back into the playoffs, and we'll see if they can make it to the second round next year. At number 24, I have Chris Paul and Danilo Gallinari for the Oklahoma City Thunder. The only reason I have these two this low is because they're both likely going to be traded. Paul will likely be traded this offseason, and Gallinari will likely be traded at next year's trade deadline. So, who knows what's going to happen with these two, and they would be much higher on this list if they were actually going to likely stay in OKC. At number 23, I have John Moran and Jaron Jackson Jr. for the Memphis Grizzlies. These two should be crazy good next season, as Moran looks like a future top point guard in the NBA, and I think Jaron Jackson Jr. looks like he'll be an elite two-way player. These two should show the potential to become a top duo in the NBA later on, but right now they'll have their fair share of struggles, and that's why they're a little bit low on this list. At number 22, I have Zach Levine and Laurie Markkinen for the Chicago Bulls. These two are a great scoring combo with Levine being able to create his own shots and shoot from everywhere on the floor, and Markkinen is a dangerous shooter from downtown. Their defense does need work, but if they can get that down, they'll be much higher ranked in the future. At number 21, I have Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram for the New Orleans Pelicans. These two were hard to rank as we aren't sure just how good Zion will be right out of the gate. But, He'll likely be at least around an above average starter and he'll have an impact on both ends of the floor. Ingram when healthy, which is what he should be to start training camp, showed the potential to be an elite scorer in the NBA. He averaged about 25 points at the end of last season, and next year I could see him averaging at least over 20 points per game. We'll see how these two will play, and I think they are going to be a top 10 duo in the future. At number 20, I have De'Aaron Fox and Marvin Bagley III for the Sacramento Kings. Some may think they are ranked too high, but Fox has become one of the NBA's best two-way point guards. Bagley III also showed the potential to become a 20-10 guy, and these two may go up even higher if they are able to get the Kings into the playoffs next season. At number 19, I have Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo for the Miami Heat. Butler should make the Heat at least playoff contenders next season as he's a great two-way player, and Bam is also a great two-way center who is a great defender, scorer, and passer for his center. 
I'm definitely looking forward to seeing Bam play, as he should take the next step next season with Whiteside gone. At number 18, I have Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton for the Phoenix Suns. This duo was really hard to rank as they struggled to lead the Suns to wins last season, and honestly they are both pretty bad on defense. However, they are two great scorers and have the potential to become better defenders, and depending on how much these guys improve and if they can lead the Suns to more wins next season, they could potentially become a top 10 duo in the NBA. At number 17, I have Kyle Lowry and Pascal Siakam for the Toronto Raptors. This may seem like a high ranking, but these guys were key in helping the Raptors get a chip last season. Of course, Kawhi was their best player, but Siakam was great last season and could potentially become a 25 point per game scorer given the usage he'll likely have next season with Leonard gone. Lowry was very good as a distributor and he should be solid next season even with a slight decline as he gets older. We'll see how the Raptors will fare next season, and I think they'll be better than expected without Kawhi next year. At number 16, I have Carl Anthony Towns and Robert Covington for the Minnesota Timberwolves. This is probably the most underrated duo in the NBA, as Towns is one of the best centers in the NBA that can give you 25 and 10 a night. Covington is also an elite defender who can guard all positions, and not to mention he's a great 3-point shooter as well. With Covington healthy, he and Towns should help the Wolves stay in playoff contention next year in a loaded Western Conference. At the midway point, at number 15, I have Trey Young and John Collins for the Atlanta Hawks. I rank these two pretty high because I believe they will both take a big step next season. Young is coming off a great rookie season and looks like he'll become one of the NBA's best shooters and distributors in the future. And Collins is a guy who can give you 20 and 10 a night, and he just needs to improve his defense to become a top 5 power forward in the NBA. I think these two will help lead the Hawks to a surprisingly solid season, and I could actually see Atlanta fighting for a playoff spot at the end of next year. At number 14, I have DeMar DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge for the San Antonio Spurs. These two almost helped lead the Spurs to the second round last season, but they eventually lost to the Nuggets in 7 games. But nonetheless, these two should help the Spurs be playoff contenders next year again, and they should be the top two scorers for the Spurs next season as well. At number 13, I have Blake Griffin and Andre Drummond for the Detroit Pistons. This duo is mainly led by Griffin who had an MVP caliber season last year, as he was doing it all for Detroit last season with both scoring and playmaking, and he showed a very diverse game that is much improved from his days with the Clippers. Drummond is one of the top rebounders in the NBA, but he does have a limited offensive game that caps his ceiling. At number 12, I have Kyrie Irving and Karis LeVert for the Brooklyn Nets. I didn't include Kevin Durant or the Nets duo would be ranked much higher on this list, but KD will likely be out for all of next season as he recovers from his Achilles injury. So. Levert will be on this list with Irving and these two should form a dynamic backcourt that has great scoring and playmaking. At number 11, I have Kemba Walker and Jason Tatum for the Boston Celtics. This ranking may end up being too low if Tatum takes a big step like he was expected to last season, and he could definitely become a 20 point per game scorer in the NBA. Walker was just selected to the All-NBA third team, and he's one of the top point guards in the league in my opinion. The Celtics should still be a top 4 seed next season, and we'll see if they can beat expectations with their new star point guard. At number 10, I have Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert for the Utah Jazz. With this ranking, I'm definitely banking on Mitchell taking a big step next year, with Conley helping to take some of the offensive and defensive pressure off of Donovan. At number 9, I have Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum for the Portland Trail Blazers. This is one of the highest scoring duos on this list, and they can really put up points in a hurry. However, defense is not exactly great with these guys, and that somewhat caps their ceiling to go up more in the rankings. At number 8, I have Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis for the Dallas Mavericks. This may eventually be too low for these two as Doncic had one of the best rookie seasons in NBA history, and he could potentially be a 25-8-7 guy next season. Porzingis was a top 15 player in the NBA before he got hurt, and he is also a great scorer and rim protector next to Doncic. These two should go up much higher on this list in the future, and in a few years, I could see them easily being in the top 3. At number 7, I have Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray for the Denver Nuggets. These two also have the potential to skyrocket up the rankings, as Jokic had an MVP level season and is arguably the best center in the NBA, depending on what you think of Embiid. He is one of the most unique players we've ever seen, and he should have another great season next year for the Nuggets as the focal point of their offense. Murray got a huge contract extension, and he looks poised to become a 20 point per game scorer next season. They shall lead the Nuggets to a top 4 seed next season, and we'll see if they can make it farther into the playoffs this time around. At number 6, I have Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid for the Philadelphia 76ers. 
These guys are hard to rank as Simmons still has no jumper and Embiid is still injury prone. But Simmons is an incredible all around player who can do everything else besides be a good shooter and Embiid is an MVP candidate when healthy. We'll see if they can lead the Sixers to the NBA Finals in a wide open Eastern Conference and I'm expecting them to at least be their number 2 seed next season. At number 5 I have Stephen Curry and Draymond Green for the Golden State Warriors. Some people may think this is too high, but people forget just how good Curry was without KD in the 2015-16 season. Curry is still an MVP caliber player and I wouldn't be surprised if he goes off next season for over 30 points per game. Green is still a great all around player and he will likely see an increase in usage rate and possibly average almost 10 assists per game next season without KD. These two should help allow the Warriors to stay in the playoff hunt and we'll see if they can surprise everyone and still be contenders without KD and Thompson out for the majority of next season. At number 4 I have James Harden and Russell Westbrook for the Houston Rockets. It's going to be interesting to see how these guys play alongside with one another as they both need the ball in their hands to be the most effective. Harden should be good both on and off the ball, but Westbrook is a poor outside shooter and will have problems playing off the ball. It's going to be interesting to see how they fit, but they may be a top 2 duo if they can lead the Rockets to a 60 win season. At number 3 I have Giannis Antetokounmpo and Chris Middleton for the Milwaukee Bucks. This duo helped lead the Bucks to the number 1 seed in the Eastern Conference last season and they will look to repeat again next season. Giannis is the reigning MVP and Middleton is a great secondary scorer who could average about 20 points per game next season and I'm expecting big things from these two after a disappointing end to their playoff run. At number 2 I have Kawhi Leonard and Paul George for the Los Angeles Clippers. This was hard to rank as these two and the number 1 ranked duo on my list could easily be flipped. But we'll get to the other two later and Kawhi and Paul George should form one of the best wing duos if not the best wing duo we've ever seen in the NBA. These two give the Clippers a great combination of scoring and incredible perimeter defense and they shall lead the Clippers to the top seed in the Western Conference next season. And finally at number 1 you guessed it I have LeBron James and Anthony Davis for the Los Angeles Lakers. I had to put this duo as number 1 as LeBron is still the best player in the NBA when he's engaged and Davis is another MVP candidate who can do it on both ends of the floor. People forget just how good Davis was when he wasn't on a minutes restriction and he and LeBron fit together almost perfectly with those two providing amazing play on both ends of the floor. We'll see if they will live up to the hype and lead the Lakers to a championship next season with all the high expectations put on them. So that's a wrap thank you all for watching if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more daily NBA content just like this. Be sure to drop like and subscribe and also be sure to turn on post notifications so you can stay updated on my newest video will be coming out. Also follow me on Instagram and hit me up if you want to talk about basketball, business or have any videos you want me to do. Let me know as I do try to battle all you guys there. Drop a comment down below on your rankings for all the duos in the NBA. But let me know as I do it all comments I'm definitely interested to see what you guys have to say. So with all that being said once again thank you all for watching and hopefully I will see you guys soon for the next video. Peace.